What if the computers that we use today aren't anywhere close to being powerful enough for the problems ahead? And if that's true, then who wins the race to build the machines that can? And more importantly, how do we tell whether a company like Rigetti is on the edge of a breakthrough or walking straight into a wall? I mean, those are some really big questions, and it's behind today's video. I'm going to break down what makes Rigetti's technology different, why the stock has been moving the way it has, and whether the risks outweigh the upside for today's investors. And I'm telling you, the answers might surprise you. Now, if you're new to the channel, hey, what's up? My name is Rick Orford. I've been trading since 1999, and no, I'm not a financial advisor. That's a good thing. I break down the numbers so retail investors like us can make smarter, more confident decisions with our money. Before I continue, I wanted to thank our friends at Investing Pro for sponsoring this video. Now, I'm sure you've guessed, I spent a lot of time making sense of the markets, right? And Investing Pro is just one of those tools I keep coming back to. Sure, you've got access to over a thousand financial metrics, multiple valuation models, and a wealth of data, just like other platforms. But here, it's all presented clearly and it's easy to understand. And probably my favorite feature on the platform is ProPix. It's got more than 80 AI driven portfolios, like Tech Titans, that you can copy. You can see all the current holdings, and the portfolio updates itself once a month. So you're not trading every day. Plus, its long-term returns, they're back-tested north of 25% a year, which is all very impressive. Heads up, Investing Pro is running their largest sale of the year, and you can access the tool at a 55 to 60% discount, plus an additional 15% through my community link, which you can find in the description. And that makes now an excellent time to check out the platform. Quantum computing is a new kind of computing that processes information using qubits instead of normal bits. A regular bit is either zero or one, but a qubit can exist in multiple states at once. And this lets quantum computers explore tons of possibilities in parallel and solve certain problems dramatically faster. The catch? Well, it's that qubits are incredibly sensitive to heat and noise, and that makes building reliable, scalable systems really hard to do. And that's exactly where Rigetti Computing enters the picture, as an early mover that's fighting to make practical quantum computers a reality. Its lineup includes the Anka 3 processor, which is an 84-qubit system, and the Novera QPU, which is Rigetti's first commercially available quantum processing unit that's powered by Anka architecture. Rigetti also runs a cloud platform that allows developers access to quantum processors directly and build programs using Quill, which is the company's own quantum instructions language, which helps developers test and run quantum workflows. John Martinez, one of the Nobel Prize winners in physics, said that in a recent interview that China has caught up quickly in the race for practical quantum computing. And according to him, the United States may now be only nanoseconds ahead in the race. But he stressed how important it is for the U.S. to maintain its lead and how narrow that lead has become. He even visited the White House to discuss quantum technology, which the administration now sees as a national security priority. He suggested the government may be shifting its focus from AI to quantum, possibly including direct support. And even though he was talking about the entire industry, Rigetti's stock jumped around 15% that day alone. With that in mind, let's have a look at their latest financials. Rigetti released its third quarter financials on November 10th, and it reported revenue of about $1.9 million, and that was down around 21% year over year. At the same time, net losses surged about 1,258% to just over $201 million, compared to $14.8 million in the same period last year. That works out to a loss of about $0.62 cents a share. Management said that rev the revenue decline mainly came because of lower income in collaborative research projects, materials, and professional services. And that huge net loss spike? Well, it was mainly from a $182 million expense labeled change in fair value of derivative warrant liabilities. That just means it wasn't actually money that went out the door. It was a paper loss that it was tied to the valuation of its stock-related warrants. 
But the real question is what's going to drive Rigetti's growth from here? And what potential pitfalls should investors like us be watching? It's come up in my Discord, so let's talk about it. First, Rigetti's been making some meaningful progress in its hardware. In August, they launched Cepheus 136Q, which is the first multi-chip quantum computer that uses four chiplets and delivers a median two-qubit gate fidelity of 99.5%. Cepheus 1 pushes their progress forward by offering higher accuracy than the Anka 3 models and cutting that 2-bit gate error rate in half. Lower errors mean more reliable results. And the chiplin design also boosts performance, making manufacturing simpler and improves production yields. These are all critical pieces of the pie for scaling quantum machines to much larger size. And they're not even slowing down. Rigetti's already working on a 100 plus qubit chiplet that's planned for release before the end of 2025. They also recently signed an MOU with India's Center for Advanced Computing, which is the company's top research and development organization within the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. The goal is to develop hybrid quantum computing systems that support government labs and academic research. Rigetti and QFox, a Dutch quantum startup, were also awarded a $5.8 million contract from the Air Force Research Lab to advance superconducting quantum networking. And more recently, Rigetti announced its support for NVIDIA's new NVQ-Link platform, which connects quantum computers with AI supercomputing systems. NVQ-Link speeds up communication between CPUs, GPUs, and quantum processors now, reducing delays and making hybrid workflows much more practical. And this is just going to help quantum and AI systems work together more smoothly, which could accelerate progress towards large-scale quantum supercomputing. Now, I've covered what could make the stock rise. Let's shift to the risks because, I mean, a company at this phase definitely has it. And the biggest issue I see is simple. Rigetti hasn't yet turned a profit. I mean, its net income has been negative for the last five years. A lot of er early stage companies lose money for long stretch. This is normal. And Rigetti definitely fits that pattern. Some quarters, they look promising, while others, well, they just slide back into deeper losses. And that's the inconsistency that makes it hard to see the steady financial progress. And then we've got in insider activity in May, the CEO exercised options to buy 1 million shares at 96 cents a piece and then sold those shares at $12, around $12, netting an $11 million profit. On November 20th, the CFO and CTO also sold about $1.2 million worth of shares filed as compensation. Now, all of this is normal and can be done for many reasons, but naturally, investors, you know, we ask questions, especially when the company is still unprofitable. I mean, moves like these can make investors wonder, right, about leadership incentives and long-term confidence. Then also, Rigetti also faces some competition from smaller companies like IonQ and D-Wave. But then some rivals are slightly ahead in certain areas or have more cash on hand. But overall, they operate in similar in the similar space in terms of age and resources. And then you've got the tech giants, right? Quantinium, a full-stack quantum computing firm that was created by Honeywell, also became a founding partner in NVIDIA's Accelerated Quantum Research Center. This $600 million partnership could overshadow Rigetti and other quantum players because NVIDIA and Quantinium both have the resources to push research at a scale that these smaller companies just can't match. So those are the big risks. Um, let's take a look at how Rigetti's stock is performing. Right now, it trades around $28 with a market cap of roughly $9.3 billion. Year to date, the stock is up around 85% and up about 545% in the last 52 weeks. Volatility-wise, Rigetti has a 60-month beta of 1.68, which means that it moves about 68% more than the overall market on average. And this just means that the stock can run hard when the market is strong, but it can also fall off faster when sentiment shifts. So with all that, is Rigetti a good investment to buy right now? Well, consider that a consensus among seven analysts currently rate the stock a moderate buy with a high target price 
of $51. So that suggests as much as 82% upside from the latest closing price. The average score is 4.29 and has moved down over the last three months. And overall, I agree. I mean, I'm watching Rigetti closely this week because, because of rising national security interests, new partnerships, and recent stock momentum could keep drawing attention. At the same time, profitability and insider trading are still key risks that us investors need to keep in mind. But what about you? Are you buying Rigetti at these levels? Yes or no or why? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps others find the video, it supports the channel, and you won't miss out on my next deep dive. Well, that's it for me today. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.